Welcome back to tech tip number three. This time it's about compressors or lack thereof, I suppose. Um, what I've done is I've got uh, some kicks in this track. Uh, I'm going to mute them and I've just grabbed another instance of kick two. And I've just selected whatever the first one was. It's TR808 kick. Um, right. So th this is really about when potentially not to bother using compressors i see a lot of producers out there where you know they've grabbed uh it could be a sample of a kick or it could be you know like this instance using kick two doesn't matter what your source is um and i see so many producers out there throwing in a kick and then immediately throwing on say a compressor and making the kick bigger louder stronger whatever um for me personally, I just don't really see the need in that. Uh, for starters, you're using up processing power of your computer, blah, 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 whatever. That's not a big deal. But mostly, I think you're just giving yourself work that you probably didn't need to do. Um, you know, if you're using kick samples and you find that this kick isn't quite loud enough or punchy enough or has too much or not enough of something find another kick you know we've all got hundreds if not thousands of kicks in our sample libraries uh make use of them find one that does work and it's probably far easier than using a compressor but as an example i'll give you uh the track i've been working on here with uh the 808 kick So fair enough, the kick's not really punching in. So you could stick on a compressor. And, you know, we want this kick to, well, mostly be louder, I think. But also we want a little bit of compression because we're not looking for the transients to be too loud. So, you know, if I wanted to make this kick louder, then uh, while I play it, I'll bring the threshold uh, down a bit and then increase the ratio. So the ratio of compression is higher. And then using the makeup output gain, I'll just raise that a fair amount now. So comparing that with the compressor on and off. It's made a hell of a difference. Um, you know, you can see visually it's it's completely different audibly it's hugely different and you know subjectively i suppose i've i've made that kick drum uh well for lack of a better word better so that's all well and good but the problem is 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 i'm now introducing a little bit of distortion into that kick uh, there are going to be potentially some sort of phase issues running it through a compressor. It's just not an ideal scenario, but playing the track as a whole, it kind of works. But obviously, you know, a lot of people don't necessarily know what compressors do immaculately and you know, different compressors will have different characteristics. And if you know your compressors inside out and you know you're looking for a very specific sound or a very specific adjustment on a kick drum, then by all means, crack on, use that compressor. Great. Good for you. Um, my suggestion, though, is to just use a different kick drum, because at the end of the day, if you're flicking through different samples, I've already built my own here. So I'll just unsolo that. And it's far better. So you could hear I started with this one uncompressed. It was hollow, it was empty, it was weak. You know, we all agree on that. Turn the compressor on. And I definitely made it better. There's a lot more punch in that. There's a lot more bass. There's 
obviously I've put some extreme release times into that and it's an 808 kick anyway. So, you know, even if we discount that sub bass that's so extended, it's a definite improvement. There's no denying that. But just by using a different kick drum, well, that's really what I was looking for was more body in that kick. So that kick came across as weak because there's a lot of sounds going on. There's hi-hats, there's bass, there's everything going on in this track. And actually what perhaps we didn't know we wanted was actually more body and punch in the kick. Well, using that 808 kick as an example, you know, there wasn't enough body and punch in there. No amount of compression is going to give you that body and punch. So this is one of the things I think it's a bit of a weird tip because I feel like I shouldn't have to say it, but you'd be surprised at the amount of people that try and fix a kick drum when actually they've probably got 10,000 other kick drums that they could have used. Um, and that kind of fixed the problem that wasn't really there. Uh, so it's a bit of a weird tip, but it's one that I feel like I have to say. Yeah, that to me is just so much better than this one. And the reason is, is because it's a completely different kick drum. It's as simple as that. So, you know, when you're when you're building a track, uh, I'll add on to this tip, uh, another little tip. Uh, when you're building a track, you know, I think a lot of us start with a kick drum or, or I would say certainly the kick drum is one of the first things we put into our production. Um, leave that kick there. You're happy with it. Not a problem. Carry on building the track. But once when you get to this point, so I've only just started this production and just building a sort of eight bar groove together and then playing around with some horrible instruments that didn't work. Uh, but when you get to that stage and you're thinking, right, OK, I think I've got the, the general groove. I've got percussion, claps, drum machines, whatever, a uh, bit of bass, everything's in there. It's at that point then you can maybe go, do you know what? Does this kick suit this track now? And if not, then, you know, l load up a drum machine, for example, and scroll through all your samples of different kicks and just try them out and see which one works. There's no point trying to fix something that, no amount of repair can actually correct so i would say steer clear of compressors unless you know exactly what you're looking for in terms of character from a specific compressor then there's just no need to use a compressor on a kick drum uh, if it's too quiet turn it up and if it's got the wrong sound or not enough body or not enough transient then change your kick drum find another one and then move on Thanks everybody for watching, commenting and indeed liking. We really do appreciate all the support we get here on our Sonic Academy YouTube channel. So if you find this video super useful, please, we'd love you to hit the subscribe button. We update the uh, YouTube channel every week with new content. And if you want to watch some more relevant content, just click on the videos beside me.